Have you ever decided to take out that stay tuned CD-ROM of yours to relive your best childhood memories and popped it into the drive of your modern day computer and clicked the install button as soon as the auto run dialog pops up only to see this error? Well, you can now rejoice as you have come to the right place if you want to run this classic game on Windows 7. In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to use DOSBox emulating Windows 3.1 to run this game. First of all, you'll have to download the Win32 installer for the latest version of DOSBox, which is .74, but of course I already have it installed, so yeah. Next, after you have installed DOSBox, you will now have to install Windows 3.1 inside it. You'll be using this tutorial webpage as the basis for your Windows 3.1 installation. Here you'll find links to all of the bare necessities. Important drivers that you need for Windows 3.1 to work properly. I've got a link to this tutorial in the description, but in case you can't figure it out for whatever reason, I'm going to explain it to you in my own words to the best of my abilities. So, here goes. The first step here is to create a folder in your C drive. This is where your Windows 3.1 installation will reside. In this example, it's named DOSWIN, but you can name it whatever you like. Secondly, if you don't have any old Windows 3.1 installation floppy disks around, you'll have to download a copy of Windows 3.1 off the internet. For example, you can use this download from vitasware.com. Now keep in mind that you'll have to register in order to download these files, but it'll be worth it. And you'll not need to download Disk 7 because it purely consists of printer drivers. DOSBox doesn't have printer support anyways. Now keep in mind that these disk images are in .ima format. So you'll need a program like WinImage to open them up. Next, once you've downloaded the six zip files of a Windows 3.1 disk, you'll have to extract them all. If you have WinRAR, you can simply select the files, right-click them, and select Extract Here from the pop-up context menu. And if you don't, you're going to have to unzip the files individually within Windows Explorer. And as I mentioned, all the images are in .ima format, so you must use a utility like WinImage to open them. I've provided a link to WinImage in the description so that you can open the images at your own ease. After you've done that, go to your newly created DOSWIN folder in your C drive, make a subdirectory named W31Setup, all uppercase is per the memsdos 8.3 file name conventions, uh, this is where you will put the Windows 3.1 setup files. Open Disk 1 in WinImage. Select all the files either by selecting the first file and then hold down the shift keys. You press the down arrow key until all of them are selected. And then right click and select Extract. Or go to the Image menu. Choose Select. And the star dot star here is a wild card for selecting all the files in the image, so choose select and then close. Right click and then and then extract. And then point it to the W31 setup folder in DOSWIN or whatever your Windows 3.1 folder is named. Repeat this for the rest of the disk images after this, and soon you'll have a complete Windows 3.1 installer to run in DOSBox. Next, you're gonna have to prepare all the drivers. By default, DOSBox emulates an S3 graphics card and a Sound Blaster 16, drivers for neither of which come with Windows 3.1. So again, you're gonna have to download them via the links below. Make a folder named Drivers. Again, all uppercases per the DOS 8.3 naming conventions. 
copy over the zip files for VS Free and the Sound Blaster 16 drivers you downloaded and unzip them into their own individual directories. And yet again, as per the DOS 8.3 file name conventions, we're gonna have to rename the folder that contains the S free drivers to just S free. Alrighty, now here comes the fun part. Time to actually install Windows 3.1. Here we are in DOSBox where all the magic happens. At this DOS prompt, you're first going to have to mount your DOSWIN folder as a virtual C drive by typing in mount C, C DOSWIN, and hitting the enter key. If you see a message telling you that drive C is mounted, then, then it's a success. Switch to the newly mounted C drive and then type in cdw31 setup to switch to the directory that has the windows 3.1 setup files run setup.exe and off you go now i'd recommend selecting the customized setup in case you want to have control over which programs get installed with windows uh, leave the settings at their default as they should be perfectly okay Click on the DOS box window to activate mouse support and type in your name. It can be anything but whatever. Check setup only Windows components you select. Uncheck setup printers as we're obviously not using DOS box with printers. And, and don't set up applications already in hard disks because this is a newly created virtual machine and we don't have any applications installed. This really doesn't matter. You can customize this to your own liking. The virtual memory settings are okay. DOSBox does not have support for permanent virtual memory, but that's okay. Select continue and the Windows files are now being copied. It has to create config.sys and autoexec.bat files in the, in the Windows 3.1 directory, so let it do that. It doesn't, the tutorial doesn't matter anyways. And we're done installing Windows. It doesn't matter which buttons you select as selecting reboot will just close DOS box, but it's best to click return to MS-DOS because that will exit to the DOS prompt. Before we continue, you gotta set up the auto exec section at the end of your DOS box config file which can be accessed through the start menu so that you don't have to type in so many commands whenever you start up Windows 3.1. Simply type in whatever I've got here. This is for setting the path so that you can run Windows 3.1 from any directory and this is a folder where other programs place temporary files. Also, be sure to have it mount the CD or DVD drive that you have your Stay Tuned CD-ROM in by typing in mount DD minus CD-ROM or otherwise, you won't be able to access it in DOSBox. If a letter of your CD or DVD drive isn't D, then you can just substitute it for whatever the letter is of, of a drive that is labeled Stay Tuned. We're back in DOSBox and it's now time to install the graphics drivers. Switch to the Windows directory and again run setup.exe. Scroll to the display driver setting and hit enter. Scroll all the way down to other requires disk provided by a hardware manufacturer and hit enter again. Now since we're not installing the drivers from a physical floppy disk, you'll have to point it to the path that contains VS free drivers. Now you must choose 
640 by 480 and 256 colors, the default setting, because that's what the game was originally designed to run in. Accept the configurations shown above and let the drivers install. If it prompts you for the disk again, pre type in C drivers as free again. And the drivers are installed. And now it's time to install the Sound Blaster 16 drivers because, of course, we need sound. If you're still in the Windows directory, switch to the folder that contains the sound drivers named SB16W3X in this instance and run install.exe. Again, select the custom installation. It's okay to let install all the additional audio software, so just continue. And don't install the DOS drivers, as DOSBox isn't going to use them in any way whatsoever. Ensure the path to the Microsoft Windows 3.1 installation is C Windows. If it's blank, you're going to have to type that in. The default interrupt setting for DOSBox is emulated. Sound Blaster 16 is 7, not 5, so I'll obviously have to change that setting to 7. After you've done that, let the drivers install. Now it may ask you if you want to overwrite some files. Just let it overwrite them whenever you're asked. When the sound driver installation is complete, bear in mind that there's no need to restart DOSBox afterwards actually, so you can just hit enter to exit the DOS, ignore that warning, and run win.com to start up Windows. If you hear the startup sound, then you know that everything is perfectly okay. You can also do some additional sound testing by using the provided audio software that comes with the Sound Blaster 16 drivers and going into the samples folder. We're going to Creative MIDI and playing some of those good old Sound Blaster pack in MIDI files. After this, be sure to edit your DOSBox config file again to ensure that it runs Windows as soon as you start it by adding a line to the very end that says Win, like I did here. Therefore, Win.com will automatically be executed when DOSBox start up, and you don't have to run it manually to start Windows. And before you launch DOSBox again, ensure that the Stay Tuned CD-ROM is still inserted in your CD or DVD drive as DOSBox doesn't have live CD switching support. Alright, now here comes the really fun part. It is finally time to install Stay Tuned in Windows 3.1. Now, Choose Run from the File menu in Program Manager, type in dsetup.exe, and hit Enter, click OK. The Sierra Setup window should appear. Without further ado, go ahead and click on Install. It's entirely up to you whether or not you want to do the system test, but I'll do them anyways. Your system is correctly configured for playing WAV files. The sound test should be OK. And skip the CD-ROM benchmark as proceeding with it will result in a divide by zero error crashing the installer. Although DOSBox simulates an Intel 486 processor by default, the Sierra installer determines the processor type by calculating its speed, and actually DOSBox's emulated 486 is amazingly fast. I believe it came in at something like over 300 megahertz. 
As a result, it'll sometimes tell you that your processor is too slow and you need to upgrade to a 486 immediately, but actually it didn't do that this time. And if you're not running in 256 colors, it'll tell you so. This is actually a good way to determine if the S3 drivers are working properly because if it says 16 colors in this space, you'll know that you're running in standard VGA instead of Super VGA and as a result the game's graphics are just going to be all messed up. But if it says 256 colors, then proceed to install the game. Stay Tuned requires QuickTime to play the essential cutscenes and full motion video clips, so installing it is an absolute must. Now keep in mind that this game comes with version 2.1.0 of QuickTime for Windows, but the newest version at the time of the game's release was 2.1.2, which is in fact the newest version of QuickTime that can run on Windows 3.1. I'd recommend installing that version from the link provided below. Anyways, no older versions of QuickTime are for Windows are installed in this Docsbox virtual machine, but let it check regardless. When QuickTime is done installing, play the sample movie to see if it works. Now, if it says it can't open the sample movie, you know that something's wrong and that you need to reinstall QuickTime. You don't need to register since Sierra has long been defunct anyways. And you are done! Exit the Sierra installer, and I'm just going to tell you one more little thing before I actually play Stay Tuned. Although they are not necessarily required, Microsoft's WinG drivers are essential if you want to improve the graphics performance of a game because if they are not installed it will, it will default to using the Windows 3.1 GDI and I know pretty well what that DOS box has some issues when it comes to animating large sprites with a GDI. Anyways, what are we waiting for? Double click on this little icon and... The righteous magic is happening. If you see the funny bone logo at the beginning, like you just saw, then you know that all is well. Now keep in mind that on some occasions, like when you're watching the TV at the beginning of the game, the QuickTime movies will have no sound. This is because Windows 3.1 cannot mix two live sound sources at the same time, and QuickTime Sound Engine is trying to start before the game's internal sound mixers is disabled. You can remedy this by letting one commercial end before another one starts. Well, besides that one little tidbit, start a new game and enjoy. And for Gonzok, the one who requested me to do this tutorial in the first place, I hope things are going to go all swiftly with you.